Group communication. Group communication is defined as three or more people working interdependently for the purpose of accomplishing a task. There are three primary features of small group communication. The first of these is group size. In order to be considered group communication, groups must be at least three people. Otherwise, the communication is simply considered interpersonal. The group shouldn't be larger than 15, otherwise true communication within the group becomes difficult to maintain. The second feature needed for communication to be considered group communication is that the group must be interdependent, meaning that any group member's behavior influences both group members' task and relational behaviors. The third and final primary feature of group communication is that the group must have a task in which no externally correct decision exists. This means that the group's communication is dependent on solving or accomplishing a task or goal that doesn't already have a solution or a correct answer. With these three primary features in mind, consider which of the following is or isn't true group communication. Then determine why or why not. You will be asked your answer to these scenarios in class, so be ready to respond. Here's the first one. A group of friends hanging out and talking about gaming. According to the three features I just gave you, would this be considered group communication or not? A second example, a group of volunteers at a soup kitchen. Or how about, how about this one? A small office party planning committee planning the boss's retirement party. A class of 25 students completing a group task. A church youth group committee of 10 planning an upcoming overseas mission trip. A group of five English teachers planning curriculum for English 10. A jury. Which of these scenarios would be considered small group communication? Now, within group communication, there are various roles that individuals tend to play. As you know, we each have different personalities with varying levels of assertiveness and responsiveness, so we don't all behave the same way when we're in a group. In short, there are two main categories of roles that often surface in group communication. The first of these roles are task roles, and the second are maintenance roles. Now, task roles seek to get the job done, while maintenance roles focus on the emotional or relational tone in the group. Based on what you already know about personality styles, can you guess which types of personalities are drawn to the task roles in a group communication setting? What about maintenance roles? If you guess that analyticals and drivers are probably drawn to task roles within a group, you're probably right. And the amiables and expressives tend to focus more on relationships within the group, you're probably right there too. But within these task roles and maintenance roles, there are very specific niches that are often filled by group members in a group communication setting. Try to determine which personality style may be drawn to each. Now, as I said, task roles within a group are filled by those who want to get the job done. But how do people seek to do this? Well, one task role is the initiator or expediter. This person often suggests new ideas, goals, solutions, or approaches. Oftentimes, these individuals are the most creative or energetic. Another task role is information givers and seekers. Now, these people provide a foundation for discussion by the information they both provide and seek throughout the process of a group discussion. The final task role you need to know about is the critic or analyzer. These individuals look at the good and bad points that are brought up and often look at how the whole picture fits together. Critics and analyzers are often seen by personality styles who are opposite from them to kind of be the Debbie Downers of the group, but the roles are still very vital to arriving at a final solution as long as the group's success is ultimately the critic's goal. Just as there are three main task roles, there are also three main maintenance roles in groups. Each focuses on the emotional tone and relationships within the group in different ways. The first of these maintenance roles is the encourager. This person, as you may guess, praises and or comments on contributions to and achievements of the group. The encourager finds it very important to maintain a positive environment in a group communication setting. The second maintenance role is the harmonizer or compromiser. This person helps resolve conflict or settle arguments or arrive at compromises that get the group closer to their goal. The third maintenance role is the regulator. This individual reminds the participants of the agenda or topic at hand and gives others in the group a chance to speak. 
Although not every group communication setting has each of these rules present within the group, notice when they do appear in group communication activities that we do in class. Notice as well whether you tend to fill a task role or a maintenance role when communicating within a group and the ways in which your role kind of fits your personality. Group communication is the reality of your world. While you may not realize it, your future will involve strong communication skills within a group, whether that group meets in person or through the use of technology. The truth is, the world is changing, and the independent work of your parents' educational experience and career has given way to a highly collaborative, information-sharing, communication-driven landscape that will require more of you than just getting along in a group. It will require of you that you are skilled in speaking others' personality languages while solving problems creatively and collaboratively in innovative ways. Are you up for the challenge? Then learn positive and persuasive ways to function in a group now. In this world of globalization, it will impact your future.